I don't know, but they've had a couple uh, giveaways on special teams. I don't know when you see a team that, that has had a couple of those, how much is that maybe a point of emphasis or a talking point during the week that, hey, they, they've had a couple, maybe there's an opportunity there? Yeah, I would say, yeah, some of them are, some of them you control, some of them you don't control. Um, I guess you're part of all of them indirectly, but you know, maybe the punter hits a ball that's coming down weird and hard to catch. Maybe you can't control something like that. But, uh, you know, I think they've had some fielding troubles or whatever. I mean, a lot of that we don't control. That's kind of on them. They've obviously flipped their returners around. They've gone to Pettis in the last game. Um, and he's handled more of that. I think he looks a little bit more comfortable catching the ball. Um, so that part we don't control. Sometimes if a guy carries the ball loose, then we would control that and maybe make more of an emphasis of trying to get the ball off that guy's body, something like that. But um, I would say, you know, more of that is probably on them than it is on us. Curious with a place like Chicago, obviously notorious for having swirling winds and, and gusty conditions. Like, do you have a, a book on like every stadium? I mean, do you do you have a sense for how everything works in, in each stadium with the tunnels and uh, you know, all that stuff? And, and how long does it take to kind of pass yeah. that knowledge? Yeah, good question. Um, I would say, do I have a book? I don't physically have a book. Um, well, I do feel like I have a pretty good idea on most of these stadiums. I know obviously a few weeks back we talked about New England. Um, I've been to this place a handful of times early in the year, late in the year, preseason games, playoff games. Um, obviously, this is a place where there's wind and weather and all that. Um, looks like it's supposed to be a pretty nice day, but there is some wind. Um, it's obviously different than indoors. Um, so it'll be a factor in the game. You have to account for it. Um, but yeah, I think like the north end on this in this stadium is typically a little bit less than the south end in terms of accuracy on field goals. If you look at that, um, our, our building generates a report for us on that. So I see that from them. But I think more than anything is it just takes a little bit of common sense on game day. What are the actual conditions? And, you know, typically whatever. There's some places that are unique. You know, Philadelphia has got one end of the stadium that's a little bit more open than the other end. That end's traditionally a little bit harder to kick into. Um, but anyways, every every game is a little bit different. It's definitely a, a be a factor. We can't kick 50 yarders. Eh? Say that again. The accuracy where you said north end versus south end, is that standard across the league or is that just Oh, no, south? no, no. So I would say that's more particular to Soldier Field. And that would be more like New England deal. Like one end's a little bit less accurate than the other end. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Um, I mean, the, those numbers are just from straight numbers, like a thousand field goals in this end. What's the percentage? A thousand for the other end or the last three years or however they want to do it. Yeah. Daly's had a couple low snaps the last couple weeks, anything? Um, yeah, um, yeah. obviously in the last game he had, you know, Dallas, I think there was a punt. Um, and then in the last game he uh, rolled the ball back there. I would say, I mean, it's definitely a bad snap, but there's a little bit more to it. The, he thought he was being triggered to snap the ball. He wasn't. He tried to kind of hold it back, and so he ended up rolling it back there. I, w I would say to you, I would be more concerned if he truly, it was like, that was what he thought the snap was, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, so there's a little bit more to it. It doesn't make it better. Um, we obviously were forcing it, getting out of that thing um, in good shape. I guess sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I don't really have any concerns about him. I think he's been really good for us for the last year and a half. Um, you know, not every snap's perfect, but he's definitely not my biggest worry. Um, looks like trying to get Imani a little bit more involved in special teams, uh, just to find a you know, spot for him on the field. Um, what goes into that process with a guy that you know hasn't done a whole lot of special teams the last couple of years, just you know trying to find a, a skill set to use there in mid you know, midseason flow? Yeah, so I would you probably described it pretty good. Like you're just trying to figure out like what's his skill set. You know where is where is he at on the roster? What's his role on game day? We've talked about that a number of times. Obviously, the less defense, the more special teams. Um, he's got to help to take the load off of some of these other guys. But then, yeah, for him, he's a little bit unique because he has not played a lot of special team snaps leading up to this point here. Um, so last week, we tried to work him in a couple positions that we thought you know he would be comfortable doing, we'd be comfortable doing. 
how does that process go? I think, you know, you're always evaluating players as a coach. So as I watch practice, I'm always looking at guys and thinking, okay, here's what he does well. Here's what he doesn't do as well. Here would be his strengths. Here would be his weaknesses. And then, all right, knowing who we have up on game day and who's playing more on defense and less, then, okay, what are the roles we need? Where would he fit best? Does he make us better? Is he one of the best 11 on the field? Um, is he one of the best 11 that we can probably use because the other guys are being used somewhere else? And then just trying to put, and then there's a lot of dialogue too with him. Like, hey, how do you feel about this? Do you feel comfortable with this? Uh, what would you feel most comfortable? You know, um, what two units in, inside that unit you feel com more comfortable doing this job or that job? We could go either way with it, or I could. And if a player felt a lot more confident doing A than, rather than B, then I would have them do A. Um, if, if it's an option, sometimes it's not, and you're saying, "Hey, man, are you going to have to do job B?" And it is what it is, you know. But we're going to figure out a way to get through it. I'll help you out as much as I can. Um, but he's done good. He's embraced it. Um, it's obviously probably not something that he'd necessarily be super excited about going into it. But I do respect um, his attitude and the way he's been with me and, and playing on those plays in the last game. So we're looking forward to getting him, depending on his role on defense, more involved or less involved. What are you finding that his strengths are? Say so that. What are you finding out about his strengths? What, what are some of the strengths? Yeah, so. Yep. Um, I mean, he's a long guy. He can run. Um, he's obviously, he's a corner, but he also has got some size for a corner. So you can kind of play him maybe a, a little bit as a safety role also. Um, and then, you know, it's just like he's got defensive skill set. So for him and coverage is comfortable. And then, truth be told, coverage making tackles. And then, truth be told, like kind of the role we used him on last week was rushing a punter. He's long. He's got good get off. Uh, he's got speed and acceleration. He's got length. Um, so maybe he can, you know, affect the punter and get near the punt. Um, he did a good job getting off the ball in the last game. But yeah. Trinity Benson, he's back. Just refresh me. You know, I, I think he was starting to do a little bit on special teams during that summer. Maybe you liked a little bit of what he was coming along in that regard. Yeah, it's it's funny with him because I, like, I feel like that was two years ago, but it was this preseason, you know, that he was here, right? Um, so anyway, yeah, we had him returning some kicks in the preseason. I thought he was improving there and all that. The biggest thing for him is going to be coming in here short notice and, you know, uh, what's his role on offense? And then how much can we use them and what can we get out of them in this first game? And then maybe that grows from there. But Just another week of attrition with uh, Craig and you know, potentially Malcolm You're just constantly having to shuffle the deck. Is that just the life of a special teams coordinator? Yeah, unfortunately, I think it is. Uh, it's it's definitely, I mean, there's good and bad to it. It's fun, yeah, I guess, uh, at the end of the day for me, there's a there's an initial wave of emotion that's probably like, oh, man, you know, uh, if you're being honest. But then there's a second one where you're like, OK, now how can we use that to our advantage? You know, they don't know who's going to play. They don't know where we're going to line them up. Now we can move some other guys around. They don't know, is that guy going to be a safety on kickoff? He has been a safety. They're treating him that, so maybe they don't block him. We can line him up somewhere. You know, so you can try to find ways to use it to your advantage, so I would say. It would be much like my perspective on life. Try to find, you know, some optimism there, something, uh, something good you can turn out of something negative. You know, turn bad into good, if you will, um, and try to turn a negative into a positive.